Good evening. This is Maestro with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today, we have a match from Division A of Elite League Season 5, and this is the third place match. What that means is, both of these players were eliminated from the playoff bracket in the semifinals, but they were able to play a match against each other to determine who would be considered third place in the competition. So our first player is going to be Shri, better known as Shroom, who is playing as the Eldar Warlock. This is a melee commander who can become a tank or a spellcaster, and his opponent, Man of Faith, better known as Tex, is playing as the Eldar Farseer. This is a support commander with buffs, debuffs, and area of effect control spells. So then, you know, this matchup we've got right here, we've got an Eldar Mirror on Calderas Refinery, and Eldar Mirrors are something that in recent memory I've described as sometimes a bit of a messy matchup. And I think part of the reason that is is that one of the dynamics of many other matchups is how other races deal with Howling Banshees out of the Eldar. And typically why that's such a big concern or question is that Howling Banshees out of the Tier 1 melee units I would kind of see as the, the best, the apex predator of the Tier 1 melee units. So then a lot for a lot of other races, just one of your big questions in... In tier one is just dealing with the idea or the question of how do I counter the banshees? How do I control them? But at an Eldar Mirror, both teams have access. Both players or teams have access to banshees, and then it kind of becomes a dangerous game of chicken. Do you actually fight your squad of howling banshees directly against the other one? Because you kind of run into the question of like, hmm, going to take the risk of who can get those special attacks procs first, which are basically random. Uh, and then, of course, if a special attack is procced against you, do you really run the risk of retreating and get have to deal with the possibility of getting wiped on retreat? Now, it looks like, as part of Tex's answer for this, he's choosing not to opt into the Howling Banshee duel at all. And I kind of like that idea. I kind of like that solution. But I also think that I, I see why, like, it's kind of not playing that high risk high reward game but at the same time i think probably in the short term he probably is going to end up giving ground which does appear to be at least to some extent what is happening now tex is trying to make that up with getting map control in various other areas of the map but he is going to find himself having to defend this generator bash which he definitely had to deal with and was going to be i think was going to be pretty inevitable given his competi competition composition in comparison to Shroom's, whereas I think for Shroom, I think this Generator Bash was pretty free. Uh, eventually, it does look like this squad of Howling Banshees will have to get out of here. I'm surprised they actually waited in there that long. That was actually kind of close. Nearly could have lost a model there. In the end, they get out there without losing a single one, and I do feel like the Dire Avengers could have actually finished off the Generators without the Dire Avengers, or sorry, without the Howling Banshees staying in there so long. But uh, we did see a use of the Channeling Runes War Gear for the Warlock. This is a healing war gear that heals over time, so it does have particular, particularly good synergy with Banshees. And I've been seeing it more and more lately. It's something that I've always personally loved quite a bit, and I think especially, it seems like these days it's actually quite meta and actually quite a good choice, so I like seeing it quite a bit. Grenade tossed out by Man of Faith or Tex, but Shroom does not take the bait and does not step onto those grenades. Oh no! I think Tex there dropping his micro quite a bit. Actually nearly lost the squad. Might in fact lose the squad. No, just kidding. That's his own Dire Avenger squad there. He's not going to nade his own squad. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, they, he stayed in there even just for getting to retreat for that long or dropping your micro for that long was the difference between getting that Dire Avenger squad with all Howling Bane, or sorry, with all models out, and uh, getting it out with uh, only one model, which was ended up happening to Tex. So in the end, it does look like Tex actually will be choosing to get a squad of Howling Banshees, and that is interesting considering I, I thought his strategy was going to be to not opt into the Howling Banshee duel. And th things are also now a little precarious for Tex in the sense that he has already suffered a generator bash. He doesn't have a power farm established outside of just the node, whereas Shroom has the two generators. And now Tex has gone for a really, really big tier one in the form of those triple dire Avengers, the Guardian Weapon Team, and the Howling Banshees. So 
This is it's it's kind of risky in the sense that he's definitely invested more in terms of his army. His power income should be somewhat delayed, and he could find himself running into a position where he might be behind in tech. Come tier two, which of course does open up the possibility for your opponent putting out a vehicle in the field when you are unable to counter it. So generators finally going down for techs, still in the progress of building as we can see their health bars increasing. Now it does look like Tex is at least converting this this large army into some map control. He hasn't really been at too much of a map control disadvantage in, I think, really any part of this game. It's, I think it's either been pretty even or it's actually been in Texas' favor. And certainly, in terms of victory points, he's actually winning quite handily, 470 to 271. But this early in the game, before you reach that Tier 2 threshold, the victory points really aren't the whole story. And indeed... Um, so I've even heard some people say go as far to say that victory points don't matter that much. And again, certainly at this point in the game, I would say your economy in terms of, you know, how you are on your way to Tier 2 does matter more than the victory points. When you get to the late game, when it's like 100 victory points left for either player, then victory points definitely do matter. Dire Avengers is just going to have to retreat out of there. I don't think they had enough energy to use Fleet of Foot. And here is the attempted generator bash by Man of Faith. Definitely a later generator bash. Later, The later a generator bash is, usually that means the less valuable it is. And at the moment, <laughs> Man of Faith is not being contested. He actually only has one squad bashing. Okay, now he finally does get contested. It is going to be a Guardian Weapon Team. I think the Guardian Weapon Team just barely gets some suppression as the Dire Avengers run out of its firing arc. That's going to be an attempted grenade. And the grenade does not actually connect, which I'm not surprised. The grenade was definitely a little bit late, and the suppression was going to wear off at some point. So double cap now for Shroom as he tries to even out the victory points as both players go into Tier 2. Predictably, Shroom will be getting to Tier 2 first, but luckily I don't think... Luckily for Man of Faith, at least, I don't think he's too far behind. He was at least able to get Tier 2 started at a reasonable time. Although he also has fewer resources banked unless he's hiding some purchase that um, I can't actually see behind the Tier 2 upgrade symbol. Farseer potentially in trouble. There is some use of that channeling runes. Howling Banshees for Shroom already were not at full health, but the channeling runes is keeping them topped up. And indeed, it will be the Howling Banshees for Tex trying to get out of there. They do lose a model. Yeah, I mean, I don't think... I don't think there's really any way to go about a head-to-head -head Howling Banshee fight with the opposing warlock having channeling runes and you having nothing and expecting that to really come out in your favor. Sometimes what we see, although not in this match, is sometimes uh, since the Farseer does have a healing war gear of her own, the Spirit Stones, but it works out quite differently where Spirit Stones are just a single use burst heal, very different compared to the ongoing heal over time of the channeling runes, which does have the better better synergy with Banshees. But sometimes what you will see, which I do like, although it's kind of risky, is you actually sometimes will see Farseer players go for double Howling Banshees, because Spirit Stones is also an area of effect heal, so you can heal two Banshee squads at once. But we don't see that out from Man of Faith. What we are going to see from Shroom is a Wraith Lord. He is ahead in tech. And, I mean, at the very least, Man of Faith is in a position where he could very quickly slap a Bright Lance on his Guardian Weapon Team if he wants to commit to that. However, oh man, while I'm talking about Bright Lances, we're going to see a Dire Avenger squad go down from Shroom. And I think that's a very, very nice pickup by Man of Faith. Even He doesn't know quite just how far behind he is in tech at the moment with Shroom having that Wraith Lord coming along. But I think just to inflict that kind of that kind of uh, loss on Shroom and really just reduce his army will help a lot to let Tex come back out on the field and handle what Shroom does have to offer. Yeah, 
Which Blade of Kurnos will be picked up, something that's highly effective at dealing with Howling Banshees. Can also be combined if Shroom does want to switch out the channeling runes for the warp throw, can be used to really really on any of the Eldar squads or really just like any squad period. Any of the Eldar squads, because Eldar squads in general are pretty squishy. Fire Dragon's gonna come out from Man of Faith. So yeah, I mean he's in a position where he really does not um, Luckily, he's just not too far behind in tech where the vehicle is being too oppressive at the moment. He certainly has to respect it, and with the pressure that Shroom has put on and having this vehicle here, Shroom should eventually claim a lead in victory points you know, in just about a minute or two. Fire Dragons have particular synergy with the Farseer. It is something where, certainly a long time ago, and even, I don't know, even more recently, I have often haven't viewed Fire Dragons as being particularly good. Uh, just one of their limitations as a squad is their range. And luckily, this is why, to the extent that you see far fire dragons, you will often see them with the Farseer. Because of the synergy that she has with them, due to her baseline guide ability. Exarch will be upgraded on the fire dragon squad. So again, typically the limitation of fire dragons is their range. Guide on the Farseer does increase the range as well as the damage of the squad of a targeted squad. So just good synergy with fire dragons basically is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, fleet of foot howling banshees approaching for Shroom. Shroom definitely has the melee advantage at the moment with uh, you know just those howling banshees backed up by the channeling runes. If man of faith's banshees get too close, they could get hit by the ethereal slash. And getting knocked down by the Ethereal Slash when Banshees are also around to clean up is something that could spell a wipe for Texas Howling Banshees. So at this particular time, he has to be very... Tex has to be very, very careful with his own Howling Banshees. I think the way the overall approach has to work is that he wants to look to position the Bright Lance in a way that should hopefully zone off the Wraith Lord out of the victory point, and then that should put Man of Faith in a position where he could capture it. And then I think the Banshees, although at this point they're playing at this angle, scaring off... No, it's just, that's, that's Shroom's Banshees. I think man, I think Texas Banshees need to play it a little bit more defensively. I think they, their purpose needs to be mainly to protect the Bright Lance at the moment. Just kidding, though. They're going to go for a much more aggressive play. They get around here. Can't see them behind all those pipes. I don't often move around the camera like this, but let's do it now. Warp Spiders are out for Shroom. Warp Spiders have been wiped, though. So my kind of assessment of how I think Texas, Texas strategy should have worked was definitely different from his own, and, you know, he definitely knows better. With that flank by the Banshees, he was able to... Secure uh, a kill on on Shroom's Warp Spiders, which is a huge pickup. They were, I mean, they had only just gotten out on the field. They never got much of a chance to do anything. Victory point lead did it. Oh, wow. And Shroom is just going to go straight up with replacing his Warp Spiders. I mean, the Warp Spider purchase by itself does make sense. Nicely played by Shroom there. Using the Fleet of Foot to just completely bait out that grenade. Howling Banshee is going to go in with Distortion Field. So Distortion Field, a global ability for the Warlock that reduces the incoming range damage of a squad. We're going to see the use of the channeling runes, but this squad of Banshees has also already lost two of its models. But, I mean, we see actually with the channeling runes and even just with 80% of their health, Banshee's still quite lethal. And Tire Avengers for Tex actually hugely in trouble. Shroom trying to kill as many of them as he can, down to two models. This squad going to be in trouble as well. They will fleet a foot out of there, but not one before one of their models gets gibbed. Yet another model goes down on the Dire Avenger squad. 
So definitely a few losses suffered by Tex as he starts to move this falcon out on the field. Well, not Tex. I guess if I really want to be clear about my wording, he's not starting to move it out on the field. He's he's building it. So Shroom actually still with that victory point lead, two to one, and it's 232 to 205 in his favor. He will continue with the generator bash. <clears throat> Warp spiders, wow! Actually moving forward into into an energy shield that was already placed, and eventually the warp spiders. Let's see, how did the warp spiders do there? They did lose a model, which is a bit of a shame there, because the Dire Avenger squad that retreated actually didn't even lose a model, unless it was this one that was actually retreating from from the warp spiders. So certainly what's good about the Warp Spiders is that individually they are really good against just about everything that Man of Faith has. They'll outshoot any of the Dire Avenger squads. They can get around the Firing Arc. Well, actually, they don't even need to get around the Firing Arc, but they can burn down the Bright Lance very quickly if they need to. Okay, Tech's actually going for a Generator Bash behind Shroom's back. So he'll at least, I mean, he will get the disruption on Shroom's power income, but it does mean he's giving up even more victory points from this plan. So that does look like it's why he might be looking for a back cap, or no, he's not looking for a back cap. All right, now he's going to look for a back cap. I was wondering why he wasn't, um, why he wasn't initiating the back cap immediately. I think he had a different plan, and I think that's where... I think the cap now was an adjustment. I think his plan was actually to try to flank with the Banshees as well as the Farseer, kind of like he did last time in the middle of the map. But then when he got pushed... When his army on the other side of the map got pushed back, he decided to readjust his plan and, uh, and go for the back cap. Back cap does stall out the victory points. In fact, it even puts it temporarily in, in Texas' favor, although... Typically with the way this map works, and honestly with most maps, getting a, a cap on your opponent's natural victory point is usually not a sustainable way of, sust of staying in the game. It is usually more of a temporary stalling measure when you know you can't get the contested victory point. Spirit Stone's heal will go out primarily on the Farseer rather than the Howling Banshee. So we're seeing some upgrades. <laughs> Spirit Stones, if anything, Spirit Stones are coming pretty late. Oh, this is... Now, the Wraith Lord, I think it was trying to approach the Guardian Weapon Team. Okay, Wraith Lord will be just fine. My big question in all of this is where are the Fire Dragons? Fire Dragons, I feel like if the Fire Dragons were with this engagement, I think that actually could have been the end of the Wraith Lord. Because it actually did take so much damage from the Banshees as well as the Bright Lance that I think if the... Fire Dragons were there, and if Guide was put on them, I think it I think it could have been the end of the, the Wraith Lord. So Shroom gets to keep his Wraith Lord. He now also has two Guardian Weapons teams. Guardian Weapons... Weapon... Weapon teams. They are late coming out on the field. One with just still the Shuriken Cannon. The other one putting a Bright Lance on it to deal with the new Falcon out of Tex. Who is going to try to take control of the contested victory point. Fire Dragons, however, not the tankiest squad. And this is also something that I do think is a little bit of a conundrum for Eldar, since they are generally a squishier race. It's kind of thematic for them. Uh, mechanically, in terms of the game, it does mean that they are have fewer good capping units, things that can just tank damage and cap under fire, with the Wraith Guard actually being kind of an exception to that. Wraith Guard are actually pretty tanky. Pretty big health pool as well as heavy infantry armor. But I feel you don't always see Wraith Guard that often. Kind of with the way they work out. Typically, typically I think both Warp Spiders as well as Dark Reapers are more common purchases. Warp Spiders quite a bit more versatile. And if you are dealing with heavy armor, the Dark Reaper's probably a bit safer and honestly probably just more effective.
However, advantage of the Wraith Guard, if my memory serves me correctly, I don't think they actually are affected by suppression. Which is actually why we see them just moving forward here and Shroom is just moving back. Wraith Guard ultimately, however, are pretty effectively kited around. Lose one of their model. Ooh, is that Cloak of Shadows? Yes, it is Cloak of Shadows. We have some infiltrated um, Howling Banshees. Spear Stone's heal went down on most of the Eldar army. They're also being reinforced by this Falcon right here, and it's going to be an Autark call-in. Autark call-in could spell disaster for this Guardian weapon team, just barely. Okay, the Guardian Weapon Team getting out there alive now puts the Autark in quite a bit more trouble. Autark has actually a very real risk for dying entirely. Okay, I think she's pretty lucky to get out of there alive. Wraith Guard are still up here targeting the Wraith Lord. Falcon also targeting the Wraith Lord as well, so the Wraith Lord is quite low at the moment, and it does end up being a winning engagement in favor of Tex. Ooh, Tex looks like he's going to press ad his advantage by choosing to actually squeeze, squeeze Shroom out of victory points by getting his natural Wraith Guard on Overwatch. I'm looking for some more Wraith Guards, seeing where they're coming. Okay, Autark does make things a little bit harder for the Wraith Guard. Several, just another unit that can pretty easily tie up the Wraith Guard. However, the Autark needs to be super careful. I don't know if this Autark, this is the second time, and this time I'm not sure if she makes it out alive. Indeed, she doesn't. Wow. Wraith Guard is now in serious trouble. Super low. As Shroom find himself, finding himself getting overwhelmed. Howling Banshees are super low. They only have one model. They were getting the Channeling Runes heal, but with only one model. That's not going to work out too well. Oh, no. This is the end of the Wraith Lord, I think. Wraith, yeah, the Wraith Lord. I think I might have been mixing up Wraith Lord and Wraith Guard. That will indeed be the end of the Wraith Lord. And it will be the Concede. Tex, Man of Faith does take game one in this series so now it's time to move on to game number two For game two in this series, we will be going to Fedrid Folly. Tex will be leading one to zero. And Shroom, this time, will be playing as the Chaos Lord. Tanky, melee hero who walks through cover and cannot be suppressed. And on the other side, we have Tex playing as the brother captain for the Ordo, Ordo Malleus. <laughs> and in many ways, similar to the Chaos Lord. Tanky can walk through cover, cannot be suppressed. <laughs> So at least from that description, it doesn't sound like I actually tell too much of a difference between these two heroes. So what are those differences? Well, let's see. Chaos Lord. Chaos Lord, I think, uh, does have... I think he does have a slightly better end of melee counter early on in the game, since he does have kill the weak. That is something that can be used defensively against melee units, which is... It, it, it also has counterplay to it, as it can be baited out and then dodged. But the Brother Captain doesn't have anything like here, where although he's not exactly taking a huge amount of damage, he can't actually, like, nuke or disrupt these heretics that are around him. They will just stand around him. They will put in a lot of damage. And especially with the support of that Chaos Space Marines, he will have to retreat. Baseline ability for the for the Brother Captain is called We Are the Hammer. It increases his it increases his defense, basically making him take, I believe, less damage from attacks. It also increases his speed. But he doesn't really have too much of a strong melee counter early on in the game. 
And that is often kind of a... That's something that I do feel is often a weak point, not just of the Brother Captain, but for the Ordo Malleus in general. So typically in, say, other matchups like against Eldar, the Ordo Malleus can struggle against Howling Banshees. And although we don't have Howling Banshees in this matchup, right now we do have two squads of Heretics from Shroom. And Heretics might not quite be exactly the same thing as Howling Banshees. I don't think they're quite as um, scary. They do certainly serve their purposes, and they're very good for what they do. And I'm also wondering if that's something that could be used effectively against Tex here. So Tex going with the double Stormtrooper build, the single strike squad. At this point, I think Stormtroopers are just looking for a safe retreat path through this this hall or valley over here. Well, they actually will take some time to shoot off another burst at the Heretics, seeing if they can score a model kill, but they don't. And they're lucky to get out of there without a model loss themselves. And where's this Brother Captain going? <laughs> Brother Captain dueling against the uh, Chaos Lord is going to be an extremely uninteresting fight. Neither one of these heroes at this point in the game are going to be doing that much damage to each, each other. I think if they weren't interrupted by, you know, the support from other units, I do think the Brother Captain would eventually win it. I think, but just from what I remember, just, I, I'm just trying to, my best to remember the statistics, but I think the Brother Captain does just a little bit more damage. And over time, I think he would slowly win it. Chaos Lord could kill the weak, but kill the weak actually heals per model hit, so it wouldn't get a huge amount of healing against the Brother Captain. Brother Captain, however, chasing down the Chaos Space Marines who will take cover in the garrison. Going to take a few shots over the Brother Captain as he gets away from the garrison. Doesn't look like they can target him when he's at the range of being at the requisition point, however. I think more interesting things are going on over here, which I'm totally missing. Raptors will come out for Man of Faith. Or Tex. Just kidding. Raptors belong to Chaos, so that will actually be Shroom with the Raptors. And then... Tex actually with the double strike squad. Now I think the reason for the double strike squad is primarily for this Tome of Titan. Tome of Titan grants the an ability called Banishment. It says a ranged psychic attack that strengthen, strengthens with the presence of a Justicar. This is an, a, an ability that is visually visually actually it, it basically looks like the librarian smite visually i'm pretty sure it's the same exact effect and then functionally it actually is very similar as well i think it's it's functionally it's basically the, the same as well um i think it does less damage than the librarian smite but i mean that's also considering this is a tier one squad that does not have a squad limit which is why i think we see two and I think the idea behind that is to try to nuke the heretics. This squad of heretics, meanwhile, actually, I feel like in a lot of trouble. Grenade will be thrown in, but here comes an aspiring champion to save the squad. Otherwise, I think that squad had a pretty good chance of being wiped. And uh, our victory points are, uh, well, our victory points are in favor of Shroom. You know, composition... Oh, no. That should be the Brother Captain going down. That's going to be a big loss for Tex. And compos... I feel like compositionally, actually, I think... I think Shroom has a massive advantage here. I think the Raptors basically get to jump on whoever they want. And then whoever they want... Or... <laughs> whoever they jump on then becomes extremely vulnerable to the follow-up from the Aspiring Champion Heretics. Do we have two Aspiring Champion Heretics? Yes, we do. And I actually don't really see what Man of Faith can do about that, especially because he chose to commit to the Double Strike Squad build. He did not get a Purgation Squad, which, if I'm honest, I think is a big mistake. I'm not even 100% sure if one Purgation Squad by itself might be enough. Might even need the two that I sometimes see people get. But I especially think, honestly, with this build, double Inquisitorial Stormtroopers and double Strike Squad, I, I don't think he... I don't think he really has... I don't think his composition actually has what it takes to deal with Shroom's composition. Your 
So massive map control advantage for Shroom, just capitalizing on those one engagements. Basically at everything except for Texas natural requisition and natural power. But Texas starting to move back out. However, Raptors will jump in. We, it will be followed up by the aspiring champion Heretics. What does Tex do about this? He tries to use banishment, but that's clearly not enough. Yeah, I mean, it's another pretty easily won engagement for Shroom. Shroom going to be moving around to see where else he can get value around this map. Trying to start scaring off these Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Chaos Lord is pretty low, though, at this point. At about 20% of his hit points. Now lower than 20%. Chaos Lord does manage to score a kill on that Stormtrooper squad as it was in retreat. Oh, but man, this is looking rougher and rougher. I missed it at some point, but the Brother Captain went down a second time. Yeah, I mean, even Tex himself saying that the, the Aspiring Champion Heretics are, are so good. Even Shroom is chiming in saying that he feels that Green Ice can't do anything to Chaos. And it honestly doesn't surprise me. And as, as I've said before, I think this composition massively favors Shroom. And especially, again, especially given what Texas composition has, is as well. I mean, I'm trying to think, what could he have done about it? Because even, even if he did get the purgation, purgation can get jumped on by the Raptors without too much effort. So you might have to just... And then I was about to say, yeah, I don't know. Might It might have to be like a double purgation or something. No Alright, so as both players are in Tier 2, Man of Faith actually managing to make it Tier 2 and put a vehicle out on the field despite those two losses on the Brother Captain. Of course, Rhino... I don't know if I said Razorback before, but of course, Rhino, far cheaper than the Dreadnought that Shree chose to get. But then, I mean, we've got this Dreadnought here, and part of the question is, what, what is, what does Tex do about this Dreadnought? We might see a Laz Cannon on the Rhino, but putting a Laz Cannon on the Rhino is also a pretty, is also a pretty sad state of affairs, because the, the Heavy Bolter turret is ultimately just a far better value. And the only real reason to put the last cannon on the Rhino is more because it's like, if you don't put the last cannon on the Rhino, then you have no answer whatsoever to the Dreadnought. And uh, Zine Dreadnought coming in. Zine Dreadnought is something that I liked a long time ago. These days, I actually hear it's not, you know, uh, the big rave that it used to be. I don't even know if that's a real expression. But certainly in this case, against what Man of Faith has, it, it's, it's actually just hugely good. And I, I'm the English is just not really working for me right now. Even though I started you guys off with good morning, sorry, good night. It's actually 9:15 a.m. in the morning for me right now. But basically, although the dreadnought should not ever be able to catch up to the rhino, um, the dreadnought out damages the rhino by quite a bit, as well as having a bigger hit point pool, which basically means wherever the dreadnought is, the rhino can't be. So I think all all Shroom really has to do to ensure that this game goes in his favor, which, I mean, it's already looking that way, is he can just put the Dreadnought up over here by these two victory points, and then I don't think there's any way Tex ever gets either of those victory points. Now, he does, he's not necessarily going for that. He's going for... You know what? He can walk the Dreadnought into base. He can. He can walk the Dreadnought into base and just DPS down the Rhino. I'm pretty sure the Zinch Predator can out DPS the repairs of the Stormtroopers. And then if Shri really wants wants to, he, he can actually threaten the Stormtroopers as well. He can suppress them with the barrage from the Dreadnought, then follow up with the Zinch Chaos Space Marine damage. 
Doesn't look like he's bothering to be quite that bold, and indeed he's actually giving up this side of the map, which is... I mean, I guess he went for the destroying the power farm, which is... It's definitely more of a long-term plan, whereas, you know, kind of what I was talking about was more about, like, a decisive plan to finish the game just in the next two minutes. Disrupting the power just makes it so that Tex is permanently stuck in Tier 2 if the game does somehow last longer than another two minutes, like if it actually goes on for like another five to ten minutes, that would really make it harder for Tex to come back, even if he can hang on. So Raptors jump in, follow-up fire from the Zinch Gas Space Marines comes in as well. There will be the banishment from the Strike Squad, and the Raptors are actually super low. We've also got some other upgrades. Chaos Lord will have the Lightning Claws. He will absolutely eat some Grey Knights for breakfast with those Lightning Claws. And, I mean, Strike Squad now in a huge amount of trouble up against these Aspiring Champion Heretics as well. And the Rhino is dead. And Tex now has just no army. Victory points <laughs> have not yet been reclaimed by Shroom. But there's re I don't really see this be any way. This is not game in favor of Shroom. It, it actually really does honestly personally surprise me that really good players will continue to put Ordo Malleus heroes in, in their hero pools for these competitions. I'm still not really very um, sold on the effectiveness of the Ordo Malleus at high levels. But they know better than me, and maybe they know, they know something I don't, but they're going to have to start proving it at some point. So... That will be Shroom tying up the series at 1-1. One one. And now it's time for us to move on to game number 3. Game number three in our series will take place on Jarillo's Forge. Shroom, this time, will be playing as the Eversore Assassin. This is a damage melee hero for the Ordo Malleus. Does trade out some of his health to increase his damage. And his opponent, Tex, will now be playing as the Space Marine Apothecary, a healing commander with a passive heal aura and a targeted heal as well. So, <laughs> I was just talking about the Ordo Malleus, and it does look like Shroom... He's got a he's got an Ordo Malleus hero in his in his pool as well. Now, at least based on my observations and what I've heard, I'm estimating that right now the Eversore Assassin seems to be the strongest of the Ordo Malleus heroes. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. It's generally agreed that the Demon Hunter is the weakest. <clears throat> that one I am pretty sure about. Um but I, I also feel that between the Eversaur and the Brother Captain, I think the Eversaur is regarded as being a bit better. So we'll see what Shri has to show us about the Ordo Malleus, maybe prove the worth of the faction. Of course, one of the things I also personally want to see in response to that is a different build than what Tex had. Uh, I don't know if I want to see the double strike, double, double IST. Which basically means that I want to see a tier 1.5 unit as Shroom's next squad. I feel like the Purgation is the most common choice. Purgation, I think, generally generally just like fills the most important necessarily like roles or checkboxes where it gives you your control your, in the form of that suppression. It does also give you generative bashing potential, which is situationally good in tier 1 especially. So I think in most cases... Um, in most cases, I think the purgation generally make the most sense. However, if we do th see things like a Devastator purchase by Man of Faith, then Interceptors could make more sense. But I don't think that's very likely. Typically, the Apothecary will... Uh, typically, Apothecary players will usually go for Assault Marines. Since the Assault Marines have especially good synergy with the Apothecary. And if we take a look at what Tex has... Okay, he's getting a shotgun purchase. I was going to say, shotgun's out. He has enough requisition for an Assault Marine squad, but he doesn't have the power yet. 
I think part of that, though, is that he did choose to get this shotgun purchase before getting the Assault Marines, and there we will see the Assault Marine purchase as predicted. Normally, I think of when you want to get Assault Marines, usually... Well, I was thinking in terms of, like, one of the starting builds for, for Space Marines is Scout, Tax, Scout, Node into Assault Marines. Obviously, we see a little bit of a variation here. Since Tex did not go over the second Scout Squad, he used some of the re requisition that he could have used on the second Scout Squad to actually put a generator down, which also meant that before he got the Assault Marines, he was able to get the shotgun purchase. However, Tex has been walking around on the field with a smaller army, so at the moment we are going to see Shroom take control of most of the map. Tex did have a lead in victory points for a while, but I don't think that will last for too much longer. And it will indeed be the interceptors out of out of Shroom. Now the interceptors of course will counter the they will of course counter the tactical marines <clears throat> if they are used against the scouts it does kind of bait the shotgun blast out early as compared to waiting to use that against something like the eversaur assassin all right a lot of focus fire being put on this apothecary very very nice split by shroom not getting either one of those squads of stormtroopers jumped on by the assault marines Okay, at this time, though, one of those squads of Assault Marines is chasing down the Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers will get out of there, I think, with three of their models. Oh, no, only two. So we're kind of seeing that synergy between the Assault Marines and the Apothecary. The healing that the Apothecary gives them really just gives them a lot of sticking power. So they're able to stay in here very long. And even when you don't seal... Even when you don't see the active heal being used, he still has that passive heal regeneration aura, which is just going on as long as he is in range with his Assault Marines. And typically, I personally prefer ranged Apothecary builds, but I think there's a pretty gar good argument for a melee Apothecary build in this case, since he'll be able to stay in close contact with the Assault Marines and just to provide them that synergy. So, a lot of generator bashing did happen here because of the Flamer Tactical Marine Squad. Shroom is trying to answer back, but his answer is very, very slow. Infiltrated scouts coming out of infiltration. Strike Squad looking to see if they can tie them up. Grenade goes down here. And the Strike Squad, all three models do step right on it. They don't lose a model just because they're strike, they're a Strike Squad and they're pretty tanky. But still, that was about 40% of their health taken away from stepping right on top of that grenade. At the moment, Shroom really does not have the generator bashing potential that Tex has since he does not have a Purgation Squad going for that Interceptor Squad. Definitely didn't, I mean, it just did not give him the same generator bashing potential. The Interceptors might scale a little bit later on, but they're definitely still... No, there are actually still a lot of uses for, for Purgation later on in Tier 2, whether you go for the Silencer or the Conversion Beamer as just a way of dealing with vehicles. And, you know, talking about matchups, obviously I've been, I had been talking about Ordo Malleus versus... Um, versus Eldar. Last match we did see Ordo Malleus versus Chaos and Shroom also talking about how that's tough. I haven't heard an expert opinion on this yet, but I do personally feel that Ordo Malleus versus Space Marines does strike me as a far more manageable matchup. Oh man, two models taken out for uh, on that Assault Marine squad hurts so much for a man of faith. Such expensive reinforcements. Both models killed just at the very last second there. And I'm trying to... I want to see the reinforcement cost of an Assault Marine model. Probably 75 requisition and yay power. Uh, 
Seven. Yeah, so exactly 75 requisition, seven power. Um, I think part of the reason we saw those kills on retreat came from the this weapon, the Executioner Pistol. So it grants you the Neurotoxin ability, slows the targeted model, and inflicts 120 piercing damage over time. So I think that damage was probably used on... Probably just used on the Assault Marines as they were retreating and probably contributed to them losing those models on retreat. Of course, they were pretty low at that point, but it was just... It, it just hurt me inside to see them have three models and then to see two more models killed on retreat like that. In another universe, they would have gotten out of there with all three models. Meanwhile, it does look like Tex might be kind of losing track of his of his tactical marines there, running them over for a generator bash, but they spent a little too much time in melee with the interceptors. One model on that tactical marine squad did end up going down. All right, assault marines are here. That does mean Tex even gets to keep the Scott gun, shotgun scouts out on the field. Classic Scott gun shouts. Anyway, and here it is. We do indeed see the melee apothecary. So the anointed power axe. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I feel like might go with that is the armor war gear that reduces the cooldown on the apothecary seal. Ooh, Merciless Strike knocks over the Interceptors, but we still see the Apothecary in retreat. They're going to go for, to see if they can get the kill on the Apothecary, but the Scouts are here, and they are going to shout all over those Interceptors. And I actually just mean Shotgun Blast. Was trying to make a joke there. Might have been hard to get. Might not have even been a good joke. Interceptor model does go down there. These tax marines need to be real careful. They're actually super low. Yeah, I mean, the, there's another model going down. Assault marines use merciless strike, but they lose two models. Actually, I mean, they lose a model and they lose their sergeant. I don't know if it's worth it to stay in that long there. Oh, sh scouts! Do they get out of there alive? That's so close. 13 hit points. And Shroom knows they're here somewhere. I think he's looking for them. But I don't think he's going to find them. Oh, no! <laughs> he can find them! Oh man, I believe that was a global ability from the Eversore Assassin. That was that was brutal. Oh my god. That hurts so much for Tex. Alright then, we're gonna have a Grey Knight Dreadnought out on the field for a Shroom. Tex gonna be answering back with a Dreadnought of his own. I don't know why that's a question. All right, Eversore Assassin will be getting a decap on Texas Power right here. And this is, well, Shroom is the one who's really shown us how the Ordo Malleus works. Although I feel like part of it isn't just the Ordo Malleus, it's this Eversore Assassin. Some of the things that we've seen here have definitely been things that have been unique to him. Particularly, obviously, that wipe on the scouts. Assault Marines will jump in. Tex now also with some Stern Guard veterans. At some point, however, Tex will need to purchase a new squad of scouts. Because this Dreadnought at the moment has no repair support whatsoever. Tex is not playing as the Tech Marine. He is the Apothecary. Cannot heal. However, should have the edge. Oh, this is actually a Melee Dreadnought now. Melee Dreadnought. Uh, I think the... I mean, look at how much more health the Grey Knight Dreadnought has compared to the Space Marine Dreadnought. This this melee Grey Knight Dreadnought absolutely 100% wins. Yeah, this is this is actually a disaster for Tex. 
He's just going to get his jed Dreadnought chased down by, by Shrooms. Shrooms has, with now that it has a melee weapon, it actually just does just as much damage as the, green, as the Space Marine Dreadnought while having 400 additional hit points in comparison. Apothecary trying to get combat stimulants. Oh no, the Apothecary oh, does not get punched another time by the Dreadnought. I think that could have been like kill on on the Apothecary if it if another punch had gone out. So Dreadnought is moving out Vortex. There is the new squad of scouts obviously needed to just repair the Dreadnought. Here come those repairs. And he's going to get a second spot of scouts. Wow, really committing to just helping out that Dreadnought. I guess he might also want the utility. Probably going to want some more shotgun upgrades again, since he did have shotguns before. He's got to deal with interceptors. He's got to deal with the Eversore Assassin. However, it's the Vindicar Assassin that I'm now pretty worried about. Oh, wow. So much damage. Did they get wiped here? Did they get out of there with one hit point? Unbelievable. But also just a huge amount of damage coming out of those Hellfire rounds from the Stern Guard veterans. The Vindicare Assassin can... I mean, I mean, obviously, a big part of the reason for getting the Vindicare Assassin is as anti-vehicle to deal with the Dreadnought. But the Vindicare Assassin can also put a huge amount of pressure on the Scouts. So we are going to see a switch on the weapons for the Everstore Assassin now choosing to get the Eviscerator Axe. Kill Zone benefits the Eversore and cripples his enemies. It's definitely going to be a lot more like just raw damage than the, than the Executioner Pistol, certainly against Power Armor, since it is a power melee weapon. All right, Assault Means will jump in. They will knock down the Interceptors. Just uh, did, Yes, they did knock down the Interceptors. However, we're going to have dueling Dreadnoughts. I don't know how this is going to work out because, again, the Dreadnought for Tex, it does not have repairs. The, the Scouts are not there. They're not helping it. Whereas Shroom's Dreadnought is getting repairs. I don't know what's going on here with this Dreadnought. And, again, if you just look at things on paper, the Grey Knight Dreadnought all things being equal, should win against the Space Marine Dreadnought every single time. It does the same amount of damage, but it has 400 more hit points. And then in that case, all things were not equal because the sp it was the Grey Knight Dreadnought that was actually receiving the repairs. Whereas uh, Texas Dreadnought was not. So victory points are pretty even at the moment, but I think pretty soon we will go see them go in favor of Shroom. Does look like we're going to see back capping attempt. If you can even call this back capping by these scouts. Scouts don't even have any weapon upgrades right here. And Shroom, if anything, feels like he's being a little slow to capture this victory point. He's actually going to be in a point where it's going to be Tex with a double cap against him, however briefly, as it does look like eventually the Inquisitorial Stormtroopers will move over to capture the victory point in Shroom's favor. Oh, and I missed it. But we actually had a kill on the scouts by the squad of Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. And you know what? I got to call out the elephant in the room, which is honestly that Tex is just not very playing very well in this game. Uh, obviously, just losing that squad right there as well as the way he lost his Dreadnought. He's, he's really just getting outplayed. 
Okay, we're going to have dueling power axes right here between the Eversore Assassin and the Apothecary, but support's going to come in. <laughs> this is a winning fight for, for Shroom every day of the week, as long as he's got this Dreadnought, and Tex doesn't. He doesn't have his own Dreadnought anymore. He doesn't really have particularly sufficient answers to Shroom's Dreadnought. His Assault Marines do have Thunder and Lightning. Where is... Oh, what is <laughs> I was about to say, where are the Stern Guard veterans? They're over there getting wiped. Oh, man. And so... I mean, I did recently post a... I, I mean, I actually recently posted the... The semifinals, where it was Shroom losing to Dark Hero, and where he honestly got beaten pretty hard. And you don't always see this on YouTube, on, you know, cast, because for a lot of times in the past years, and a lot on Indrid's channel, we often filter out a lot of the uneven matches. But ever since I've been more committed to actually just broadcasting more of the competitive uh, events in Dawn of War 2, you're starting to see a lot more of those come up, because they do happen, they do exist. It's just that normally in the past they would get filtered out on YouTube channels. And that even among very good players, you will see matches like this happen at times. <laughs> so at this point, man, Tex has clearly lost this game. They're just playing it out. Dreadnought will eventually go down here crazy as it seems. <laughs> uh, I do like the role play. Yes, brothers. Hack it to pieces. Terminator's out for text, but realistically nothing else nothing else significant happens in this game. This is definitely game three going in favor of Shroom. All right, that's it. Game three goes in Shroom's favor. I doubted the Ordo Malleus and then Shroom makes me eat my words and puts on a quite a showing with the Ordomalius. Whew, that was that was actually quite brutal. But the series is not over yet. Tech still has a chance, so let's move on to game number four. Game number four in this series will take place on Civil Frontier. Shroom, this time, will be playing as the Lictor Alpha, an infiltrating melee assassin commander. And his opponent, Tex, this time will be playing as the Orc Mechor. This is a teleporting ranged commander who can re repair, harass, build turrets. So... Given that Tex is kind of up against the ropes here, he's picked Orcs. I think this potentially can be a decent map for Orcs in terms of being a fairly easy run to your opponent's generator farm and Orcs generally having a pretty strong ability to bash generators. However, Tyranids, uh, I guess we shouldn't doubt their generator bashing abilities either. However, their generator bashing capabilities really rest more on the strength of the Hormigons. So the Hormigons do need to get in a lot closer. However, Tex, meanwhile, going for double melee himself. Double Sluggas can get burners to bash generators. So focus on melee from these teams or from these players, not choosing to go with the double ranged. All 
And we're seeing some of the use of this Lictor Alpha. Lictor Alpha can be particularly annoying early in the game when you don't have any detection for him. And then he can also be very aggressive about disrupting just your attempts to even just your opening caps. You put a unit on an opening cap in most other matchups. You wouldn't expect your unit to get interrupted. Because even if you see an opponent, an enemy commander trying to... Even if an enemy commander is trying to come over to you, you'll at least see them coming. Whereas Lictor Alpha, not the case. He'll just open up in melee, start bleeding models off squads, or if it's a commander, he will use Flesh Hook to displace that commander and make that commander's life very, very difficult. Now at this point though, I do think the Sluggers might be over able to overwhelm the Lictor Alpha. However, special attacks might not make that so easy. Lictor Alpha is pretty low. Slug is still chasing, eventually start backing off because there, this is the support coming out of the, the Hormigons. Now, one of the things that I would like to see personally out of Tex is the electric armor. I've seen that used to great effect uh, recently in a few different matches with the mech boy. Just very, very powerful area of effect war gear, and I, I don't really personally see much of an argument to not get it. It's funny here with the way I, w I wanted to get a closer look on the slug up melee animation because I'm pretty sure with the way they do things, I'm pretty sure they both hit with their choppas and shoot point blank with their pistols, which I believe are actually the sluggas. So now we actually do indeed see the double shooter wise. Oh, but one squad here is getting very, very close to wiped. And in fact, it will be. So a squad of Hormigons lost for Shroom pretty early on. So the double shooters eventually coming out of text do mean a lot of things. Certainly plenty of range damage. That one's obvious enough. Enough detection as well. We already have one shooter knob. We might see another but it does look like he's prioritizing the big shooters. That will give him just lots of damage, more damage, since most of the damage in a shooter squad is concentrated in the big shooters. Does look like over time, I think... I think the big shooters have been somewhat nerfed over time. I'm pretty sure the original damage value of a big shooter in retail, and I think also for a time in Elite, was actually 18 piercing DPS. Now it's 14.73 piercing DPS. So only about twice as strong as their starting shooters. But as long as I'm not just potatoing and just making a mistake, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that this is a change that happened when I just wasn't paying attention and pretty sure that the original value of Big Shooters was 18 piercing DPS. Um, but it doesn't seem to have changed basically just Big Shooters and Shooter Boys in general just being a, a staple of Orc play. I think maybe I do see a little bit more of the Double Sluggers than before, but I mean, as we can see here, even with Double Sluggers, going Double Shooters is still an option. So Ravener's going to be out for Shroom, though. And the Shooter Blob will get suppressed by the Warriors. And there, indeed, we do see the Electric Armor. However, in that case, it was used against both the Warriors as well as the Raveners. And I don't feel that is as strong of a use for it. Now, the Electric Armor will actually do power melee damage. Which technically does do um, bonus damage against the Heavy Infantry Armor of the Warriors. But I also think the health pool of the Warriors is so relatively high and the base damage of the Electric Armor is so relatively low that it's it's just not the greatest value out of the Electric Armor. I think the Electric Armor really needs to be focused just on the Termagants, primarily on the Termagants and the Hormigants where it can definitely get a lot of value. Harder to get value on that one though your, your opponent actually doesn't have as many Hormigants now because they lost one because you already killed one. But as long as he can target either one of the, either the Termagants or the Hormigons, I do think there the Electric Armor does get very big value. So significant victory point lead for Tex, 500 to 332. Shroom is finding his way into moving back here out on this map. 
He'll try to take this engagement. Shooter Boys will get suppressed by the Barb Strangler. Here is the Electric Armor doing some nice work on the Hormigons. But we're going to see an immediate retreat on this Shooter Boy squad. I think just realizing that he was overwhelmed. He was going to be facing off against Shroom's entire army. Whereas some of Texas units, both of the Sluggas were split off just capping. So Tex will suffer a bit of a generator bash for it. Can Shroom finish off another generator? It looks like now he's actually having the Hormigons target the node while the Raveners target the generator. Double Shooter Boys coming out, though, will definitely put in a lot of damage. Do they... One of them does manage to dodge the Barb Strangler shot. Attempted flank by the Slugger Boys does not ultimately work, and it will retreat. But there is enough here that Troom is starting to pull back. Ooh, take a look at this. Is that the Pheromone? Yeah, Pheromone Cloud. De very interesting war gear in that I saw the Hormigon health starting to go up. And that was because they were actually getting reinforced here. And that is... Oh, Lictor Alpha. Or I don't even know if it was the Lictor Alpha who got the kill on the Mech Boy. But either way, the Mech Boy is down. A little bit surprising to see that. Shooter Boy's in a huge amount of trouble. Did they go down in retreat? Okay, no. They will be lucky enough not to. But big plays by Shroom here in this engagement. And he actually gets to stay here and continue his generator bash. What a power play. So the Pheromone Cloud actually allows you allows allied infantry to reinforce. I think that's the only ability of its kind, the only commander ability where you can just straight up reinf you activate it and you can actually reinforce from your commander. I think technically you reinforce from the cloud, which probably targets an area rather than you know an aura around the cloud around the. Actually, I don't even know for sure. Oh, it does say targeted area. So, Tex had the better end of map control to start out, but just with this recent set of plays, Shroom is now absolutely dominating Tex's power. It does look like Tex might have been able to answer back in return. We do have one of those squads of Sluggas upgraded with some burners. So, they are, I think they're even attacking ground here, trying to hit both the node as well as this Tyranid generator. Okay, they will finish off the... Oh... <laughs> And now they go in for melee. Probably might not have even been intended melee, but probably was just intended to retarget that generator by itself to try to finish it off faster instead of kind of getting the the like splash damage from attacking ground that he got at first when he was targeting both the node and the generator. Oh, shooter knob gets pulled out. I think the shooter knob does. That is actually horrible. That is so horrible. Because I think the way it works, I was about to say, oh, does the shooter knob get sniped here? But no, I don't think it works that way. I believe the way it actually works is that the shooter knob dies last always. But the downside to that is even if he's the one taking all the damage, those other models will just die too. So that is actually what was responsible for wiping the squad. Mechboy will activate electric armor as the as the Hormigons approach. Hormigons get really low, but they will get out of there, as will the Lictor Alpha. Some more upgrades. We're gonna have the Toxic Cysts. Or rather, and that grants the Toxic Burst ability. All right, Scything Towns will come out from the Lictor Alpha as well. So fully upgraded Lictor Alpha very soon. Mechboy still only rocking the electric armor. All right, Tyranids will approach here. I think they get in range of these Shooter Boys. Yeah, not even in aiming what's out there. Hormigons are really low on health, but there comes the Pheromone Cloud yet again, allowing them to reinforce. 
probably Toxic Sis as well to just put on the damage on those Slugger Boys. And let's also take a look at those Scything Talons. Scything Talons grants the Scythe ability that suppresses and knocks back nearby enemies. So I like, I actually really like Shroom's build a lot. Part of me looks at it and thinks that it's possibly like a, an adaptive response to the electric armor. Since he knows that the mech boy is, is inevitably going to deal damage to the Hormigons. But the pheromone cloud kind of nullifies it. And then both the toxic cysts as well as the scything talons are kind of used to help the Lictor Alpha overwhelm the Slugger boys. And create an, an winning engagement against the Slugger boys in that way. However, Hormigons right here probably does not have the energy for another pheromone cloud. We're going to need to see... I was going to say, we're going to need to see some Toxin Sacks. Really, it is called Crippling Poison uh, to slow down those Sluggas to prevent them from actually completing the kill on the Hormigons. Mech Boy will teleport in here. And it's funny, I actually kind of really... I really hyped up the Electric Armor earlier on in this game. And I actually feel like it's not getting a huge amount of value now. Both because... When he uses it against the Raveners or the Warriors, it's just not that great against them. And then when he uses it against the Hormigons, we actually just see kind of that support war gear from the Lictor Alpha in the form primarily of the Pheromones. Which allows them to reinforce and just reinforce all the models that they're losing from the Electric Armor. So, Warriors are getting chased down by the Slugger Boys. Oh, is that Avataste? No, this is a Pain Boy. I didn't even realize it was a Pain Boy right out on the field. Pain Boy is just obviously giving out that Git Sauce to heal up the Sluggers over time. And definitely making some progress with it. Tex actually, although there have definitely been strong things going on for Shroom in this game, certainly in the form of the Generator Bashing, if we actually look at the map control, Tex has a massive lead in victory points at this time. Four hundred sixty-one to one hundred. So time is running out for Shroom. He's got to make something happen in terms of victory points. He's got to hold on to the map, starting now. And I think that is also part of the the edge of the double slugger build. We are definitely seeing, and I think part of why Tex originally went for the double slugger double shooter. I think the additional slugger is more meant for the map control rather than actually for the for the fighting uh, purposes. So Shroom still not actually in a position to get a double cap. A little bit surprising at this time. It's cutting it pretty close. Okay, it's a one-to-one, -one, but it will be a double cap against Shroom pretty soon. He does have some Gene Stealers out on the field, or as they've recently effectually been renamed to Denim Thieves. Slug is coming in through the back, but that will just be an immediate retreat for them. There's no way they can take on that entire entire Tyranid blob. I'm not even sure if they can take on the Gene Sealers by themselves. So, it's still a double cap for Man of Faith. He's actually getting really close to finishing this game off, and Shroom is really so close to being out of time. But that, that Venom Brew drop, getting that disruption, is actually a great way to open the, up this engagement. And that's going to be the, the Shooter Squad is gone as well from Man of Faith or Tex. So both shooter squads are down. Rather unfortunate. The sluggers are basically unsupported. I'm not even sure if they're in range to be getting uh, reinforcements, which is why I think the war truck was moved in a little bit closer. But now the war truck, only one more shot, I think, from the Venom Brood would have finished it there. What is even... This is the mech boy. He's still in here, and he gets wiped. Oh, my God. What a, what a, honestly, what an awful engagement that was for Tex. Or we could say, what a great engagement for Shroom. Just however we want to spin it and however biased we are in favor of which either player. Weird Boy now coming out for Man of Faith. As Shroom moves back over to finish off the generator farm. Tex only needs just a few more victory points. Barely anymore to finish off this game. 
But, you know, more than just holding on tight, I, Shroom, I think, is now in a pretty strong position. Of course, he's in a position now where he really can't afford to give up the top two victory points ever again. So he's got to play perfectly for just about the rest of the game for however long that is. War truck. Oh, no. Oh, no. Where's this war truck going? This is a dead war truck. There's no way it survives. I don't even know what happened. All right, so war truck is done. I mean, I guess it gets the sluggers into melee, but that was that was almost like sacrificing the war truck just to get the sluggers into melee. Forces the retreat. Weird boy will go for the cap. I think you should actually just try to hit the Hormagons with an attack. Yeah, I mean, they're so low. He might even be... Oh, no. Okay. I was going to say, if he hits him with another one real quick, he might be able to get the wipe. But Retreat came in from Shroom, so that's not going to happen. Why are these Sluggos not capping? It's, like, so close. Oh, the Sluggos get disrupted by the Raveners. Prevented from ending the game. And now... Oh, Slugga knob taken out. Tex, I don't know if he can... He can't complete this cap. Okay, going for a back cap now. So another back cap. This one courtesy of the Mech Boy. So now it's Shroom still running out of time. But if he does respond quickly enough... I think he might be able to... Oh, God. The the war... The weird boy. This is some brave... This is some brave and desperate stuff out of Tex. The weird boy goes down here. I, I, maybe that was intentional. Even using the death explosion to delay things even further. But, okay. Does Shroom get a cap in time? I think he does. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I think Tex just lost the game. He's getting stick bombers. I don't know what Tex can do here. I'm actually, I mean, Shroom, Shroom not even going to tier tier three. He can. There's, there really isn't that much stopping him. He might not even need it though. He might win the game without it. Stick, the stick bombs. Stick bomb is just gonna get molested by the Ravener Alpha. Can't do anything. Like I, I think where Tex is at the, at at this point, I, I don't think he can win fights anymore with what he currently has, and. I don't think he can just go around getting... Oh, no. Are we going to see the pain boy go down, too? Okay, the pain boy retreats. He might still go down. Oh, my God. If the gene stealers ever get unsuppressed, it's the end of the pain boy. Why are the gene stealers still, still suppressed? Yeah, I mean, this, just these repeated back capping attempts, they're, they're just, they're not going to work. Okay, Stick Bomb goes in. I guess the Mech Boy there is kind of like bait. But he's going to go down as well. This is going to be a dead Mech Boy again, I think. It's going to be so close if he gets out of here alive. No, and he does not. Oh, God. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's... It is a little embarrassing to say it, but Tex is kind of just throwing away units, hoping that he can make something happen. Unfortunately, he... Uh, he, uh... I think he just got a little over-eager to, to end the game. So right now, Shroom is letting him have this one. But, I mean, it, like, if Tex can't get two, it doesn't matter. 
Shroom is floating so massively. He's not even bothering going to tier 3. This should be the end of the pain, boy. Oh, yeah, that's 100% the end of the pain, boy. Congratulations to Shroom for taking third place in Elite League Division A. <laughs> There's not that much left to say here, not that much left to commentate on. So now we can make it official. Shroom will actually take the series 3-1 to one in his favor, and he will be the third place competitor in Elite League Season 5 Division A. I do hope you enjoyed it, and have a good night.